Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, on this short video, I'm just going to quickly run through with you how to test an ignition coil um, to make sure it's in good condition basically and it meets all the various specifications that, that the manufacturers give you. Now, ignition coils are what produce the spark on the engine for the spark plugs when it's a petrol engine obviously. And they have two windings in there, basically two lots of wire, two lengths of wire. On the primary winding, the length of the wire is much, much shorter and it's a lot thicker. Um, and that's what's supplied the 12 volts. Now, the secondary winding, that's much, much longer. There's many, many, many more turns on the secondary winding in there. It's really, really fine wire. And that's the, the, uh, the winding that produces the spark, basically. In a nutshell, how it works is the, the primary winding is fed 12 volts. Okay, Assuming it's not a balanced resistor system, which is old school, it's fed battery voltage 12 volts, and that winding has current flowing through it. Now, because the current's flowing through it in a circular motion or through all the various windings, it creates a magnetic field. And then, when we want to spark, we disconnect that feed. So that winding, the field, the, the, the magnetic field collapses. And as the field collapses, it induces a current into the secondary winding. Now, because there's a lot more turns, it induces a much higher voltage into that winding. And that's why we get, you know, 80,000 volts or more sometimes coming out on the spark plug wires. The HT leads to the spark plugs. But we're only putting 12 volts in. <clears throat> okay, that's all you really need to know, real basic. Now, as regards testing these things, we've got what we call the low tension side, that's the primary winding, and that's these, these two connectors just here, look. And I've marked on this one, <clears throat> on this turtle one, this is the one of the RAV4, which is now completely in bits, um, I've marked the little yellow marker there, look, which is the positive side, and that will become apparent when we test the secondary winding. Now, the resistance... Um, check that we're going to do. You're going to need a, a multimeter like this and you'll need to set it to the ohms position. Now for the primary winding you want to be on ohms, not kilo ohms, not mega ohms, you want to be on ohms. So you can see at the moment it's on kilo ohms. So we're going to press the range button which is that one there look. We're going to keep pressing that until we get it just sat on ohms. There we go look. Now <clears throat> to take the reading we put the two probes, wherever the hell they are, there they are, look. Two probes to your meter. The first thing you have to do before you do this test is check your meter's internal resistance. So we'll just connect those two probes together. We're going to hold them together like that. And on the meter, we'll see what it says for us. Zero. Okay, that's cool. This is a pretty good meter, so we don't need to worry about deducting any internal resistance from our reading. Cool. Okay, so... You grab your, your ignition coil, don't drop them because they get really upset if you do that. And we're going to put a probe on each of these two connections in there, look. One on there and one on there. Now it's really important that you get a good connection. And if you've got the probes that have the little crocodile clip fitments on the end, use those because they're a lot better than trying to put these in there and bend stuff. Okay, so I'm going to mount this in the vise because I'm going to run out of hands. And I'll make sure that the multimeter's in shot as well for you, and we'll take a reading. Here we go. Right, here we go. So we're set on ohms, got our two test leads, and we're just going to put those reasonably well onto those two connectors and see what we get. I just take a while for the meter to settle down. I think we'll just try that again. Okay, so we're getting a reading of 0.5. Always take the lowest reading. Uh, 0.4, there we go. Okay, so we've got 0 0.4 ohms. Oh, wow, 0 0.3 ohms, even better. Okay, so the specification, <clears throat> when the coil is cold, that's just, you know, room temperature, or below 50 degrees C, I think, to to say, then the spec should be between 0.36 to 0.55 ohms. So we're a pass on that. If the coil was on the car and the engine had been running and the coil was somewhere between 50 degrees and 100 degrees C, 
then the specification for that would be 0 0.45 to 0 0.65 ohms. And I'll put all those specs on the screen for you. Okay, now we need to do the, the, uh, the secondary winding. And to measure that, we basically put the positive test lead, well, it makes no difference, but that's the positive of the, of the, uh, the low tension circuit. So we put the one test lead on there, and one test lead down here where the HT lead goes. But before we do that, we need to change the range. We need to go on to kilo ohms. So you just move that across. There we go, look. Yeah, we'll have that one. We'll have two decimal places on kilo ohms. Right. Okay, so we're going to check the secondary winding now in the coil. So I'll put one of the test leads on the positive of the low tension circuit. And I know it's that one because I've looked in the workshop manual. Some coils have it marked if it's just one of those old, old school coils. Pop that on there, and then the other one down where the HT lead goes. And we've got 12.28 kilo ohms. Now the specification for a cold coil that's below 50 degrees C is 9 to 15.4 kilo ohms. So we're a pass on this one. If you're testing a hot coil uh, between 50 and 100 degrees C, then the specs 11.4 to 18.1 kilo ohms. But that's not relevant for us today. Okay, cool. It looks to me like this coil checks out as regards the resistance value checks. So that's how to perform a resistance check on both the, uh, the primary, which is these two terminals here, the primary circuit, and the secondary circuit, which is the positive of those two and the outlet to the HT lead. That's the, the two connections for the secondary check. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily mean if it's past those resistance values um, and, it, and it's within spec as regards resistance checks, it doesn't necessarily mean that this ignition coil is still a pass. There are other checks that you need to do. And one of those tests that you can do is obviously on car, you can do what we call a spark test. And one HT lead at a time, you fit your spark tester, and I'll, I'll do a video on that for you. You fit your spark tester, and you see basically how long the, the, the or how large a gap the spark will jump. And the longer the gap, then the higher the output voltage of the coil, and the better it condition it's considered to be in. And if you've got a bit of a misfire, then you might find that one of your cylinders, if you've got multiple coils, one of your cylinders, or if it's a V6, a pair of cylinders, has got a much weaker spark than the other four. And that's an indication that uh, your coil isn't producing the, the correct voltage output for the high tension circuit for your spark plug circuit. I had exactly that problem with uh, an old uh, a Mazda MPV. I forget what year it was now. Uh, it was the one with the, the coil packs. It wasn't coil overs. There were no coils, individual coils per spark plug. No, no, no. It had a coil pack. And within that coil pack, there were three ignition coils, and each ignition coil did two cylinders. And two of those ignition coils, well, first of all, they all passed the resistance checks. No problem at all. They were all banging spec. But when I did a spark test, the first two ignition coils, absolutely perfect. Third ignition coil, much, much weaker spark. Fit a new coil pack, and they, they come as a sealed unit. You get all three coils replaced, and instantly the misfire went away, and actually the vehicle drove much, much better, much more powerful and a lot more fuel efficient. Okay, um, just for your reference, <clears throat> the, the Toyota part number for that particular coil is there, look. So all the specifications that I've given you on this video would relate to that ignition coil, whether it's fitted to a RAV4 or a Corolla or whatever it is. If it's got that part number coil on it, those specs will tally. Okay, well, my name's Andy Young, and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then click on subscribe, and you'll see a little gear icon appear. If you'd like notifications too, then click on the gear icon and tick the notifications box, and that way you should receive an email uh, whenever I upload any new videos. Um, also, you'll, you'll find me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, you can message me through any of those portals if you like, although please, the best way that I prefer is through YouTube, and that way everybody can see what your questions are, and they'll also be able to see my response, and that might answer their questions too. If we, we head off into different portals, it becomes a bit harder to find stuff. Okay, crew, well, thanks for watching, and, uh, well, good luck. Cheers for now. Over and out.